So in the last year, canned cocktails and RTDs, that's ready to drinks, have really taken off. They are everywhere. They're in liquor stores, they're on Curiata. Your favorite local bar got a canning machine and has been canning drinks to go, and I thought it was about time I take a look at these things and find out if they're any good. And if they're any good, how good are they? Which ones are good? Do they like jam on their toast? If not, why not? So today, I'm kicking off part one of a three-part series looking at canned cocktails. I mean, most of them are in bottles, though. Specifically, we're gonna look at the canned old fashions. So my expectations are, um, well, my expectations are very low. I have not a ton of these. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five canned old fashions to take a peek at here. I know there are more on the market. Um, I hope that we can extrapolate some useful information from the approaches, because each of these kind of have like different ingredients and different like, you know, they have different contents and maybe we can use that to be, to form the basis of some guidelines because what's available in your area, your market is gonna be different from one person to the next. Although I will say that some of these, in particular, this little guy right here, I'm pretty sure, uh, Post Meridium, this is from Curiata and they'll have a couple of others as well. Uh, you should check them out at drink.curiata.com. All right, so to kick this thing off, I don't have anything in my hand. I think that I should start with my own baseline old fashioned, just like, to have an old-fashioned to compare the old-fashions against. Is that necessary? No, I know what an old-fashioned tastes like and I know what a good one tastes like, but I want one. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. Here we go. I need a big old ice cube, put that in there, make it look fancy like that. I'm gonna do my pour in whatever order I like. I've actually, you might notice this bottle's pretty low. This has been um, my go-to for a while. This is minor case rye. I do normally do an old-fashioned in, in bourbon, and um, I grabbed this because I'm really enjoying it and I want you to know about Minor Case Rye, honestly. I, I think it's excellent stuff from Limestone Branch Distillery. I've been mostly making um, improved whiskey cocktails with this. They come out phenomenal. Um, and I'm pretty sure that the Minor Case Rye is available on Curiata as well. So a lot of Curiata stuff in here. Uh, a couple dashes of Angostura. Oh my God, a huge fly just came flying out of here. I'm gonna move on with this drink. I know I'm not that picky about flies. Um, I like mine with about a quarter ounce of simple I have a funny feeling too that most of these canned ones are going to be quarter, you know, on the sweeter end of the spectrum of an old fashioned. Just a scent, a hunch. I have no basis for that. It's just my guess. I'm going to give that a stir. One thing, you know, one of the things I like about a teardrop like this when I'm working with a glass specifically, I find this to be a lot easier than to use the other end. Just kind of makes your life easier. Remember, Barfly, they make them where they're just double teardrop. <laughs> Getting it nice and cold in there. A little orange peel here. And okay, there we go, beautiful. People always ask me, how do you get so much oil out of your oranges? I don't know, I just buy them at the grocery store and put them in my fridge. Maybe you're not putting yours in the fridge. Put them in the fridge, that might help a lot. Bottoms up. Yeah, delicious. Just the right balance of sweetness and bitters. Um, the rye brings uh, an additional level of character and spiciness here. Really, the evolution turns back towards rye, like, Boop, like almost like a clock reaction or something. And a real bread spice. Mm. It's good, good, good. Yum, 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 yum. All right, there's our standard baseline. Let's start with this one. Some people are gonna say that's not a canned cocktail. This is Joaquin's Rock and Rye. Now you might look at that and say, well, what the hell is that? It's got chunks of rotten fruit floating around in it. And it's got, you know, isn't that, is that whiskey? What is it? I don't know. Well, it's America's oldest cordial producer. And I found out recently from me saying cordial a lot in a video that in the UK, you guys say cordial. What the fuck is that? <laughs> you guys serious in that language? What is that? Yeah, okay, this is not a canned or bottled old fashioned specifically, but I've never had this. And all my life I've been told, basically that's what this is. This is sort of a version of a canned or bottled old fashioned. Um, you'll find this at your local liquor store. It's 27% alcohol, so 54 proof. Um, it's pretty mixed down. It's rock and rye. Rock and rye is rye, whiskey, and rock candy syrup. That's what that is. With choice fruits, which appear to be oranges and cherries once upon a time. The ghost of an orange and a cherry, they're disgusting looking. They truly are foul. And the idea is that you just put this over some ice and give it a try. Oh, look at that. I've never seen this before. It's got this like special breather top so that you can't pour out your choice fruits. And we're gonna pour two ounces of rock and rye. Ooh, it's like pink coming out of there and kind of syrupy. It's got a real viscous texture to it. Boom. And that's it. That's the whole thing. You could, I suppose, make a cocktail with this, but it kind of is a cocktail. Joaquin's Rock and Rye, established 1884, with choice fruits. 
It's made and bottled by Charles Joaquin, C-I-E-I-E-I-E-I-O, uh, Philadelphia. I don't think it's going to be any good, and I don't think it's going to be anything like an old-fashioned, but, you know, when else am I going to have a chance to talk about fucking rock and rye on this show? It's never going to happen, so it seemed like an opportune moment. Bear with me. We'll get to the old-fashioneds in a minute. Good Lord. Oh, my God. Woo! I wasn't expecting that to be cursed. That is bad. My God, that's bad. I was not prepared for that. I'm sorry, I, I, I did not steal my nerve. It really took me off guard. It's weird. It's not at all what you expect. It, it tastes very floral, like really flowery. Um, really shocking. No, it's not fun. There's like some brown sugar notes. That's probably, oh, it's weird. It's got this like tangy, earthy kind of dirt flavor that somebody probably likes. I'm not digging it today. Maybe if I was in a different mood, I might like it, to be honest. I'm not into it. It's, it tastes a little bit like, um, yeah, it tastes a little bit like that. Like the inside of a can, like that can taste has a little bit of that. It doesn't have any real bright spots in the flavor, if that makes any sense. It's a lot of like moldering kind of earthy. This is the drink the green man would enjoy. This is the drink of death. But like, not like this drink kills you, but like it tastes of the grave. You know, like, and maybe you want that. Yeah, no, I don't. Oh God, yeah, man, I'm not. Ugh. Way better. Okay. Um, rock and rye, not great. Let's move this train of destruction right along to On the Rocks brand, old fashioned, right after this. I wish I could do the uh, the A B C thing. The uh, we'll be right back. There's a time. It was a long time ago. Hey, I'm back. We're back. Let's move right along. Let's take a look at the um, On the Rocks brand. Premium cocktails, the old fashioned. So this is crafted with Knob Creek, uh, made with Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, bitters, and natural flavors. It's 70 proof, 35% alcohol. It says all I gotta do is pour it over ice and enjoy it. That sounds simple. I'm probably gonna put a little stir on it. I think I'll do a little bit more than just pour it, but you know. So here we go, I'll just give it a little pour. About two ounces there. Try to get that to stir. This glass wants a sphere of ice. It doesn't really like this cube. I'm not gonna lie, that tastes terrible. It's awful. It's not like off-putting, but it doesn't taste anything like a, an old-fashioned. I mean, it tastes more like a, um, maybe like a scotch and soda, but like, honestly, it tastes, it tastes too orangey as it is. It tastes like a, like a vodka seltzer that went bad, like went flat or something like that. Like it has that kind of like citrus flavor profile to it. Um, absolutely nothing like an old fashioned. I'm shocked by how unrecognizable this is to its, its namesake. This is not good. There's a little bit of peanuts. The knob creep uh, comes through at the very end there. Very subtle. But ultimately this is a, um, it's not good. It's very thin, very reedy. It's, like, eh. it's got no body. There's no oomph to it, no texture. There's no, it just tastes like a little citrusy whiskey water. I mean, the color too, you can see is, I don't know how much that matters, but the color is orangey. It looks like, you know, it looks thin and doesn't look like that. I, I'm assuming that some of these are going to be good. I don't know. Let's move on. I mean, there's nothing else to say. It's not good. This is bad. What do we do next? You want to do High West? You guys want to do this High West one? I like this little, this cool bottle. It's great presentation. It feels very apothecary. Love, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for a quality product presentation. Barrel finished cocktail. This pour six cocktails, it's 43% alcohol. Old fashioned made with straight rye whiskey, straight bourbon whiskey, and bitters. Oh, we're doing a blend, a split base there, nice. Crafted using carefully measured high quality ingredients. We follow per serving recipe of two parts whiskey, half part Demerara simple, good. Three dashes of aromatic bitters. Mature the cocktails in rye barrels for three more months, wow. Creating a rich, smooth, well-rounded product poured over ice. Well, what I like about this, if this turns out to be good, is that there's a real value add here. Because you, you know, there's three months of aging after this drink has been made. I question the utility of barrel aging cocktails, but if it's something you're after, and this is good, you don't have to do the barrel aging yourself. It's already done for you. So there might be something to that. Well, this could be good. This could be good. I have, yeah, maybe, who knows? Let's put it in a glass, let's find out. Yeah, I, it's funny, I started by measuring all these, but I really don't need to, right? Like I just need there to be enough in here for me to, oh, that's the right color, I'll tell you that. It's a much, I mean, come on. That's already, we're in a much better shape. So that's something. I know color can lie, you know, there can be colorants and additives and stuff like that. But, and I suppose, you know, some of these might want a twist of orange, but none of the mass have, you know, I'm kind, my rule here is I'm doing what the, the packaging says. If it says put a twist of orange over it, I will. It still might benefit from it, even if they're not asking for it, but it feels like cheating. 
that's an old fashioned. It's less sweet than I like it for my taste, honestly. I think that they could have gone a little harder on the sugar. Um, probably doubled it. But yeah, I mean, that tastes like good whiskey um, and bitters. I personally prefer my own spec, but I, would, I recognize this as an old fashioned. And yes, I think it would benefit a lot from a fresh orange peel. And I think it'll benefit a lot from a drop of, orange, of, of, of simple, but I'm not gonna bother with that. Um, not bad, not bad at all. I don't really taste the benefits of the aging, personally. I, I mean, to, to really answer that question, you would need to have an unaged version of this to drink side by side. Um, but it, it is done, it is aged. So that's something that you're probably not gonna do on your own. Uh, I mean, yeah, like look, an old fashioned is a really easy thing to make. Like a barrel, uh, like a bottled or canned old fashioned, like do we really need these things? I don't know. But here at least, like there's an ad, right? Like they've aged it. Maybe you want that, maybe that matters to you. I don't know. At the very least though, I'd say that this one isn't an old fashioned. Okay, what's next? Okay, this is Handy and Schiller Signature Cocktails Barreled Old Fashioned. This is a huge bottle of bottled old fashioned. Handy and Schiller's, Handy and Schiller Signature Cocktails, Merchants Exchange Company. Uh, New Orleans, known as birthplace of American cocktails. That's not true. Two men have contributed richly to the cocktail. Okay, but they're, you're not them, they're dead. Yeah, they tell the whole story about people that they aren't. And then at the final, at the end here, they say, Handy and Schiller's roles in the early days of New Orleans cocktails serve as inspiration for over 150 years of libations. What the fuck does that matter? What does that matter? All right, what does that matter? Give me. Oh, 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 no, no, no. I don't like that. I want to take the plastic off that cork. Getting into this bottle is harder than to make it your own. All right. We'll get that later. There's no instructions, I don't think, right? Buffalo Trace Bourbon and Peychaud's Bitters. That's cool. I like a Peychaud's. That's great. The cock and actually Peychaud's, right? A lot of these will say aromatic bitters. I don't think they've got Angostura. they got some kind of house thing going on. Oh, so it's aged as well. Enjoy over ice and garnish with an orange. So we have to follow the rules. We have to follow the rules. I'll try it both ways because nobody else is getting that garnish, but like it does say it needs it. I kind of think they probably all should have a fresh piece of citrus. That's probably a lot of old fashioned right there. The ice is now making contact with the drink. It's big ice. It's too big. There's better, there's smaller ice in there, but it's buried. This is great, <laughs> by the way. This is really good. And it's gonna get better right now. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, it's perfect. I mean, I don't know, it's perfect, it's not mine. It's not my old fashioned. It's such a personal thing. You come up with your own spec, right? But this is right there. I, if you put this in my hand, if I said I went to a bar and I was feeling like an old fashioned, and I almost never order old fashions when I'm at a bar. That's the drink I make at home, because I'm lazy, and I, I like it. On the rare occasion that I did order an old fashioned when I was out, and you put this in my hand, I'd be damn happy. This is a fine old fashioned, even better. No, that's perfect. That's a great old fashioned, hell yeah. Fuck, that's great. That's great. That's super good. We gotta get this on Curiata. This is really good. There's no question. This is very nice. Um, Handy and Schiller. Okay, great. Awesome. I know I should give you real tasting notes. Um, it is peanutty and and it has just the right balance of bitters. And honestly, I gotta say, usually Pay Shows comes through with a lot more um, anise flavor, like almost like an absinthe. I'm not getting that here. So to me, that tastes like an old fashioned that I would make with Ango, and I don't mind at all. It came out, whatever they did, it came out great. Um, it is not undersweetened. It's not too sweet. I personally think a little drop more sugar in there makes it a little bit, is gonna bring some of those flavors out a little bit better for you, for well, for me. You're gonna taste them a little bit better, but that's because I got a sweet tooth probably. It's on the dry side, and I think that you could put a drop of bar, you know, simple syrup in there if you wanted to. Uh, or if you're like some kind of a purist who for some reason is using a bottled old fashioned, but bottled old fashions have been around since like the 1800s. So I don't see why that is impure. I guess you could put a, 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 a sugar cube in there if you wanted to go that route. But yeah, hell yeah, that's a fine drink. That's a fine drink. All right, let's do um, this one. It comes in a hip flask, which you know is a mark of quality. Oh, this is Hublin. Hublin, I can't pronounce it. Hublin, Hoiblin, Hoiblin. Um, so Hoiblin is a company that's been around for a long time. Um, they used to make canned cocktails back in like the 60s, 50s, 70s. Pretty famous for that actually. Matter of fact, um, there's an episode I haven't done yet that I've been thinking about doing about Brass Monkey. Uh, that funky monkey, chunky, brunky. Brass Monkey was actually a cocktail, a canned cocktail that Hoiblin made back in the day. Um, and then the Beastie Boys did a song about it. Uh, that funky monkey, Brass Monkey. 
expertly crafted cocktail since 1892. Oh, they've been around longer than I thought. Look at that, Hubelin. Crafted with bourbon by 1792. I'm gonna show my ignorance here. 1792, that's a brand. Isn't that, isn't Jefferson's whiskey 1792? Is, or is that like a collab or something I do? I don't know. I'm not super well versed. Bourbon whiskey bitters and artificial colors, says it right there. Nice to know. Thank you for your honesty. With roots dating back to 1892, Hulan introduces, uh, Hubastank introduces a new line of ready to go cocktails, mixing the best spirits and ingredients to deliver a simple, well-balanced cocktail with every sip. Bottled by Sazerac Company, Louisiana. Uh, I'm sorry, not Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. Let's put this sucker on ice. I mean, although, again, it's in a hip flask. It's designed not to be put on ice. In fact, there's no instructions out here at all. I think you're meant to drink it from the bottle. We're not gonna do that though. We're gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. Here we go, Hubelin Old Fashioned 1792. No instructions, we're guessing. Not good. Very flat flavor, oversweetened. Honestly, this really just kind of tastes like cheap whiskey with sugar added. It's not like bad, but it's not good either. It's not good like the way this really actually tastes like an old fashioned. It's not like my own house old fashioned, of course. I mean, nothing is. It's not good at all. It's It tastes meh. Um, honestly, I think it's still better than this on the rock stuff. I think this is not good at all. And it's, it's definitely better than, I guess, rock and rye. But in fairness, I don't think rock and rye is trying to be an old fashioned. Rock and rye is rock and rye. And I've learned today that I don't like rock and rye. So there it is, Hubelin's uh, Old Fashioned. Not the one I would buy if I was buying a pre-packaged Old Fashioned. Th moving along. So the final one, full disclosure, <laughs> Kiriata sent me this because I said, hey, we're doing an episode on canned Old Fashions. What do you guys have? And they sent us these to try. Um, but in truth, it does sound good. So um, one of my favorite local restaurants is canning their cocktails. They can them in pretty big cocktails, and it says, you know, it's got four in here. Well, I mean, you open that can, you can't put it back in the fridge or something like that. So, I mean, I'm not a big fan of like the full-size can cocktail for, for canning of cocktails, right? Bottles makes a lot of sense, because these have corks, right? But on the other hand, these don't have ingredients that are gonna spoil. I think that the canned cocktails from my local bar do. Once you open it, you better drink it, it's gonna go bad. But here we have the solution. This is awesome. This teensy tiny little shot of espresso can. It's so cute, I love it, this little can. I do, I really think this is a wonderful thing. And this is from Post Meridium. It's one drink, the whole drink is in here. It's the right size, it's awesome. Tells me right here, shake the can, pour over ice. The cocktail that started it all, a double measure of bourbon meets bitters and sugar for a sacred blend with real history. It's beautiful, hell yeah, man. It says straight bourbon whiskey, three ounces. This is crazy. They got the measurements right on there. Straight bourbon whiskey, three ounces, blend of bitters, blend of three bitters, four dashes. Demerara syrup, a third of an ounce. I'll get a little more than that. Uh, and orange zest oil. Ooh, okay, cool. That is, that is very double. I mean, that is double. Excuse me, sir. Uh, here we are, Post Meridium's Double Old Fashioned. That is tasty. Very complicated, very tasty. I like this drink. I don't know if it's a old fashioned. I don't know if it tastes really like an old fashioned or my expectations of an old fashioned. But then again, I don't know what else to call it either. I think it is an old fashioned. It's just a bit different than I would expect it to be. It's good, it's very tasty. There's a lot of evolution in here, a lot of complexity. Complexity here, by the way, that is not in any of the other canned ones, or I mean, honestly, even my own personal old fashioned isn't that complicated. And I think that's part of it. Like, I don't expect an old fashioned to have a lot of complexity and evolution. That's more the domain of an improved whiskey cocktail or Sazerac or something like that. That has a lot more stuff going on in there with, you know, some absinthe, some maraschino. This has a lot of stuff going on. This is a complicated old fashioned. It has a kind of citrus opener that gives away like peanuts and sweetness and caramel. And then the citrus kind of comes back with but like a different kind of citrus, like a sweeter citrus. And at no point is this overly sweetened. Yeah, it's very orangey. And then like there's some notes of clove. I think that's what that is. Clove and like allspice, certain like bittersy. Yeah, right now really definitely clovey vanilla allspice. Clove vanilla allspice shows up with the orange. It has a real Christmassy vibe. That's probably coming from the bitters. And what they are, we don't know. It's a blend of 
three bitters, and it, it, it leaves on this very pleasant clove and ginger-ish kind of notes. It kind of reminds me of, I don't know if you're, but this is such like a bougie thing to say. Le Pain Quotidien, Le Pain Quotidien. It's like a chain of like, um, like restaurants that you'll find in the city, Le Pain Quotidien. When they have, in the fall, they would do a, a, a kind of a hot cider um, that they would season with lemon and um, uh, star anise, and I, I love that. It was like one of my guilty pleasures. But this has a finish that reminds me, just the finish reminds me of that a little bit. I enjoy that thoroughly. I think that's really, really good. I'm just not entirely sure it's in any way comparable to like an actual old fashioned that you would make yourself. But I don't think you'd be disappointed with it either. So what did we learn? What can I say from these drinks that we can, we can, we can relate to choices? I would say that if your canned old fashioned is calling out the bitters they're using or calling attention to the bitters they're using. Probably a good sign. If they say natural flavors, that's probably not a good sign. Natural flavors, there is nothing natural about natural flavors. Natural flavors is an industry term that means, I don't even know what it means. It means gobbledygook, but it doesn't mean flavors from a thing that they found in nature. I know that. It means stuff that they make in a laboratory that are designed to supposedly emulate the chemical compounds that are found in nature, but they're not natural. And I think that when you see natural flavors on anything, like that is a catch-all term for surprises. Um, so I would say in this one, right? This was natural flavors, not good. Um, this guy, uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, so here's my rules. If it says natural flavors, maybe not good. If it says artificial colors, Probably not a good sign. Those are not good signs. If it's barrel aged, at least there's something there. It might not be, you might not buy it again, but at least you're getting something for your money because an old fashioned is so fucking easy to make. You don't need to buy a can or bottle of old fashioned. You should buy one from Curiata because it helps me, but you don't need to. You just don't. I mean, I will say though that like some of these like, yeah, it's, I'm lazy, like that's appealing. If I'm making an old fashioned, I'm already in a lazy kind of way. Reducing it to one pour from three, four or five, depending on how complicated I want to make things is great. It's great. I like to be lazy, but the drink itself is not going to compare to the one you make your own. I just won't. I'm going to say calling out the whiskey that they use, not a, not a deal maker, right? Cause almost everybody who can is going to call out the whiskey they use. That is not going to tell you this is a good one. I would say look out for those natural flavors, avoid it, and maybe to look for calling out the bitters. Because calling out the bitters has turned out to be a good sign. You call out Peychaud's, a blend of three bitters. Um, oh, forget the rock and rye, it doesn't really count. Um, and then this one, and bitters, doesn't really specify, but this one turned out to be okay anyway. Um, and you know, it's funny too, it's like, you might look at that and say, look at that. Look at all of the artifice in the little piece of the little the little seal that has to be broken and the little the pinking on the edges there make it old timey. You know, it feels the, the apothecary stuff jar. If you see that much artifice, you might think probably not good. But in truth, this one is good. You can't you can't look at all that salesmanship and say they're overselling it, it's not good. Because here's one that they didn't oversell. And you know why they didn't oversell it? Because it's a shit product and they weren't gonna put any money into selling it. I just like, these are just, just adorable. I just love this cute little can. It's just so cute. I want everything to come in as a cute little can. They're super cute. So today we did part one of a three-part series on canned cocktails, not hard seltzers, canned cocktails. And uh, today specifically we looked at canned old fashions. I, I, it's not possible for me to look at every canned old fashioned, but for now, today, this is what I got. I really like Post Meridium. I really liked the High West Old Fashioned. I really liked the um, <laughs> Handy and Schiller. There it is, canned Old Fashioned. Stay tuned uh, for part two when I take a look at canned margaritas. See you guys next time on another episode of How to Drink. Do the stuff, do the stuff, by the way. Like, subscribe, do that stuff, do that stuff.